Yeah, what the hell is that? Oh, God, oh, they gosh. are. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to sit down and tell you guys the birth story of Miss Raylan Avery. Last time you guys seen me she was in my belly and now she is here. So I'm going to tell you guys how it all unfolded. Um, I'm going to try to remember as many details as I can. It's been probably a week and a half now since I had her. I had her on the 29th, 11-29, the day after Thanksgiving. Like I said, I had her the day after Thanksgiving, which is also here in the United States, Black Friday. It's a big shopping day. Um, and we always go as like tradition just me and my mom and her sister will go my cousins like it's always just something fun for us to do on black friday we don't necessarily go to fight over any deals it's just something fun we get up at like four in the morning and we'll go to these stores and we'll shop and we'll shop for like hours so i was 37 weeks and four days I believe now keep in mind when I'm telling you this story that I was already two centimeters dilated I was 80% effaced and so my body was already preparing for labor so we went Black Friday shopping at like four in the morning and we did a lot of walking I could just feel her she was very low like I just could feel how low she was the whole day um, my legs were cramping up, so I definitely knew that it wasn't going to be much longer. So with all the walking, that could be what brought on my labor, but I also did the midwife's brew. If you don't know what the midwife's brew is, I will pop it up here, but basically it's a little concoction of like four different ingredients that is supposed to induce labor. Now, before the comments start telling me that I shouldn't have done that, that I wasn't full term, I was full term and I had already had an ultrasound. Um, they told me that she was perfectly healthy and if she was born then it would be perfectly fine and that was a week prior to doing this. So um, her lungs were fully developed. I would have never in a million years attempted that if I thought that she was not ready. And I really honestly did not think it was going to work. I had seen some mixed um, videos on YouTube of people who did it and had success and then those who did it and did not have any success um, but I gave it a shot and I honestly think that is what put me into labor on Black Friday. So this little concoction has castor oil in it and a lot of the times when people want to induce labor they just take castor oil but castor oil will make your contractions um, really bad and I was not wanting to do that and so the purpose of the other ingredients in the midwife's brew is to counteract the bad effects of the castor oil so and I think it's the almond butter that's in that recipe that actually counteracts um, the bad effects of the castor oil so, and also before I go any further, I am not a doctor. I am not telling you that you should go and do this to induce your labor. It's just my personal experience and what I did. I'm not telling you what you should and shouldn't do. As always, you should be seeking medical advice from your doctor. So after we got home from Black Friday shopping, we got home around 10, 30, 11 that day. We had started at four and then we got home, like I said, around 10, 30 or 11. And I went ahead and I mixed the drink up and it comes to about a total of 18 ounces between all of the ingredients um and it's absolutely disgusting by the way technically you're supposed to drink it down within 30 minutes but i at the time did not know that and so i took the drink to the bathtub and i just sat in there and relaxed while i sipped on it and it was about an hour and a half i got half of it down and i ended up puking it because it was so disgusting it was like every gulp that i took I was gagging and finally I just lost it so I was like well this drink probably isn't gonna work I just puked up 
half of it. So I went ahead and I got out and I blow dried my hair and I was like, well, I puked up half of it, but maybe if I drink a little bit more of what's left, it will do something. I went ahead and I started sipping. I got maybe half of the half that was left. So we'll say one fourth of the drink is what I got down. And I'm thinking what I had sipped on in the bathtub, most of it had already kind of digested into my system because it had been an hour and a half since I had started drinking it anyway. Anyways, so um, I do that, I blow dry my hair, I drink some more, and I decide that I'm gonna lay down for a nap. And so I'm laying there and my back is just really achy. It's starting to ache. But I never once thought that it was labor. I thought we just did a lot of walking that day and my back was just hurting from all the walking. So fast forward about 10 minutes, my back starts twisting. Like it was just like somebody was taking my spine and just twisting it and the muscles were starting to tense up and then I was having the tightening in the stomach and I've this is my third baby so I know what a real contraction feels like and so I let a few of those happen and my mom was here by the way she was laying down for a nap while this was all going on and so um I let a few of those happen and I started timing them and I, they were about three to five minutes apart and so after about I would say maybe 10 of those three to five minutes apart I went and I got my mom she's like do I have time for a shower and I'm like yes go ahead by the time we got in the car which is about I say 15 minutes later from waking her up she hurried up she got her shower um, they were about two minutes apart at this point but I was a little bit confused because they were more like Braxton Hicks they weren't in my back anymore and they say that a real contraction will start in your back and it will wrap around to the front of your stomach whereas a false contraction will start in the front and wrap around to the back um, now I did not have any back pain anymore at this point I was just having Braxton Hicks every two minutes and so I was like well I live 45 minutes away from the hospital so we're still gonna go if anything we're just taking a joyride <laughs> it'll be fun so um, we get in the car we go and we get to the hospital and I walk up to the window and I tell them that I think that I need to be checked that I could possibly be in labor. So they went ahead and got me checked in, got my wristbands on, and started um, monitoring me. They hooked me up to their little contraction monitor. In the bathroom. Sure. Okay. And they just kind of watched the contractions for a little while. Um, until they could get in contact with my doctor so um, while they were monitoring the contractions they went ahead and they checked me and I was between three and four centimeters dilated and they would like you to be four centimeters at least at the hospital that I go to to be considered active labor so uh, they finally get in touch with my doctor and my doctor tells them that she would like to just give me fluids for a couple of hours and see if maybe I just wasn't dehydrated and they were going to send me home. So at this point when they tell me that I'm starting to get nervous because I know my body and I did not feel like these contractions were going to go away. Um, they were starting to get a little bit more intense at this point and I knew that I didn't want to leave the hospital um, like that with them coming so close together and getting more intense. But the nurse did assure me that if my contractions got worse and if I had made progress within that two hours, then they would go ahead and admit me. They were pumping fluids in me and um, not even the whole two hours had passed and they checked me and I was at a pretty good four. So they went ahead and called my doctor back and let her know that my contractions weren't slowing down even with the fluids and that 
I was a good four centimeters. So they came back in the room and they told me that she was going to go ahead and admit me and start the epidural and we would have a baby by that night. So um, they take me to the labor and delivery room and they go ahead and they start the IVs and it had probably been a good my time frame is really blurry and fuzzy because I was in a pretty good amount of pain. I really wasn't keeping up with the time, but my sister did get some footage of the clock and things like that. So I will have that overlaid. Like I said, I don't know how much time had passed, but my contractions were picking up. And so they finally bring the epidural in, but uh, it only took on my right side and it didn't work waist down. And with my first epidural with my firstborn, um, I, it worked all over like it was supposed to. It worked left and right and waist down. And then with my second born, it only worked left and right side, but it did not work waist down. So this time it only worked on the right side. My left side, I kept having to turn on to... They said that it works by gravity, so they kept telling me to turn on my left side to pull the medicine that way, and so I was having to do that every few minutes. And then I would turn back because it was just uncomfortable to lay like that and having contractions. My right side is the one that's numbed real good. My left side, barely. And I am not numb at all, waist down. So I'm a little bit nervous at this point. So uh, the nurse comes in a little while later, and she, I tell her that, or I, I asked her if I was supposed to be feeling waist down because I know sometimes they want you to feel for pushing reasons so that you can feel to push. And so I told her that I was still, um, I was not numb down there. And so she said, she asked if I was just feeling pressure and I said, yes, it's a lot of pressure. And she asked if I was feeling pain with it. And I was. And so she told me to sit up for a little while and see if the medicine would flow to that area and just kind of numb everything. So I did that for a while. And unfortunately, that uh, did not work. So uh, I was stuck at like a six at this point. And so my doctor had come in and they were going to go ahead and break my water. And so we expected after she broke my water that I would dilate pretty quickly. That's just my history. But unfortunately, I was still stuck at a six like an hour after she broke my water. So they started a dose of Pitocin. Pitocin does not feel good. It's not a picnic. <laughs> Every contraction, there was no gradual uh, you know how when your contractions start, it's like a gradual pain and then it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger and then it eases and it goes away. No, the Pitocin's like BAM! And it just like goes and goes and then it'll go away and then they come like back to back. So I'm having contractions back to back that are intense ways. Maybe 30 minutes had passed and um, I started feeling this great amount of pressure huge amount of pressure like I felt like she was about to fall out so um, I'm sitting there on the bed and I'm laying on my left side at this point because I'm trying to get the medicine to numb my left side again so um, I am hurting so terrible at this point so I tell my sister to go get the doctor because I just felt like she was coming out then like I couldn't hold her for one more second so um, she goes and she gets the nurses and they all come in and the nurse looks and she says do not cough do not sneeze um she is right there so uh they went ahead and they got the doctor in there and that very quickly they got everything set up and and i was just a nervous wreck i don't know if you guys are like that i do not tolerate pain very well at all so i was nervous because i knew it was gonna hurt and it was gonna hurt a lot so um, but I had already labored most. It was just a matter of getting her out. Get everything ready and I start pushing. Come on. Yeah. All right, go ahead and push. Easy breath and push her off. Come on, you got it. Push hard. Two, three, <laughs> six, seven, breathe. Oh. 
Breathe right. a little bit. Yeah, and push hard. A little push. Or, and yeah, push, push hard. There we go. Tiny bit. There we go. Would yeah. you like fall out for me? So it's out, right. Kelly. Okay, Brad. You need a little push. A little push. Get her shoulders out. Little push. There we go. There we go. Look down, Kelly. Look how they are. I was just about to go get another dose and she came and told me she was ready to push. So. I don't like it. <laughs> Can you feel it? and uh, it was two pushes that's all it took was two pushes and she was out and she was squawking like a bird she she came out she was perfectly healthy she weighed six pounds seven ounces she was 18 and a half inches long i know when the boys were born it seemed like it didn't take very much to calm them down but when she was born it's like she cried for like an hour seemed like <laughs> but um she was perfectly healthy but yeah that is pretty much my labor and delivery story that is how my labor unfolded and started and that's how she got here so hopefully i didn't leave out too many details like i said i don't know if it's all the walking from black friday that actually put me into labor or if it was the midwife's brew who knows um i did puke up half of the midwife's brew but then again i had been drinking on it for like an hour and a half so i'm thinking most of it had probably gotten my system before um, before I puked it up and another thing is that I started drinking this drink around 11 11 30 and I was in labor by three o'clock so not much time had passed whenever I actually went into labor if it was the drink that actually put me into labor it worked very fast so if you do the midwife's brew just be prepared to go into labor <laughs> pretty quickly anyways thank you guys so much for watching and thank you all so so much for all of your sweet messages and comments I've been trying to keep everybody updated over on Instagram you have probably already seen her if you follow me over on Instagram and I've made a few community posts as well here on YouTube but you all have been so sweet congratulating me and just welcoming her. But I hope that you guys have a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.